Yo, what's up everybody? It's Hayden from SA Boxing Talk here to cover another fight on uh, who wins and why. Uh, Ilunga Makabu versus Alexi Papin. I think this is a another well it's a, well, it's a WBC silver title defense for Ilunga Makabu. Uh, Papin is a little bit of an unknown, so of course sometimes it's very difficult to predict the unknown. But from the training clubs who have seen a Papin, he looks like quite a monster, as do most Russian boxers to be fair. Um, yeah, so Ilunga Makabu another test and it's so good to see it's so good to see him firstly uh, getting regular action and against credible opponents. You know, there was a I think about a year or two where he was fighting guys with more losses than wins and it was disappointing, you know, from a purist point of view. And um, he got that shot against uh, Dmitry Kudryashov. He stopped the, the 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 Russian and now it's literally since you got the silver title, you're the you're you're in command of your own destiny so to speak and uh, He's the champion and guys got to come to him now. He's fighting again in Russia. It's going to be interesting. Of course, it's on the Sergei Kovalev versus Anthony Yard undercard. Uh, sorry for the rhyme there. But yeah, it is on that card. And uh, yeah, so a little bit of a background. Uh, Junior Makabu is... Uh, Ilunga Junior Makabu is, of course, a uh, guy from Congolese training in South Africa. Uh, I think he's training a bit abroad. He trained abroad for his last fights. And he's training abroad for this fight. Well, I mean, I would have caught an interview with him. Uh, if he was here, he's usually in South Africa. But of course, um, if Damien's listening, uh, when 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 Ilunga Makabu comes back, can we get that interview done, please, sir? Thank you very much. Anyway, uh, on to the next thing. Uh, Papin, um, he has actually fought a guy that's fought in South in South Africa recently, a uh, Wilberforce uh, ship. But I just want to check real quickly because obviously Papin's got ten knockouts. I think he stopped Wilberforce in the eighth round. I just want to make hundred percent sure before committing to that statement. He TKO'd him in the eighth round. So he's. He's got power, but against, you know, Wilberforce is, a, is, is not, again, uh, a world beater, so to speak. So, eight, took eight rounds to... Uh, Wilberforce is tough. Um, I mean, are we expecting this Russian guy to be tough? I'm expecting him to be tough uh, for Ilunga Makabu. However, Ilunga Makabu also has a devastating knockout record. 24 knockouts in his 25 victories, you know. Um, and it seems like the only way to beat Junior Makabu is to stop him. So, if Papin has any way to victory it's it's to knock out junior makabu i don't think you i think junior's uh, he's gotten better i think uh he's not s sitting on the ropes anymore uh like he like he's done strategized in the past uh, trying to wear out opponents it just didn't work on the sort of higher level guys uh guys like tony bellew uh which unfortunately he lost to um by sitting on the ropes but uh, he looks like he's learned from that and he's kind of taken it in and he's you know he's settled and i think a lot of those, a lot of the, the the bad things about Junior was that he was moving around camps and he's settled there at the Jurans camp now. Uh, very good people there, so uh, you know that's that's a good one for him. Uh, going into the fight itself, I managed to find an article about this fight on Bad Left Hook. Uh, obviously, it's a big fight. Come in events of the evening, uh, defense of the WBC Silver Cruiserweight Championship of the World on in Russia, 24th of August. Nice distance between the fights, as I said before. Uh, just purely based on the fact that we want Junior Makabu, he's a world-rated guy, he's, you know, the only thing he's been shy of is that, that elusive world title, you know, and uh, we've, he's, he's just, he's got the ability to do it, now it's just about doing it, and of course with the big shake-up at the Cruiserweight division with Usak moving up, there's going to be a whole, uh, there's, there's already a grab for the titles, you know, and um, I think this, this, this positions him really nicely for what is to come, and I'm just reading this article now, um, you know, it says uh, Makabu, whose only trip, uh, only trip the judges was a majority decision over Dmitry Kucha in 2013, uh, flawed by Bailey in a bid to get. Yeah, so it's a pretty negative article from what I'm reading. Uh, it's pretty much saying that you know he's he he, he got flawed and you know he went the distance with a, with a majority with uh, Dmitry Kucha. But ah, I saw that fight. Uh, he he. He cleaned up Dimitri Kucha. Um, but they do allude to the fact that he's now six wins straight, um, slugging it out. It was a slugfest, let's be honest. It was a slugfest with Dimitri Kudryashov. It was whose chin is going to last the longest, you know. And uh, But Junior's just, um, he, he was landing a lot cleaner. Kudryashov wobbled him, uh, I believe it was in the second or third round. Uh, the legs were, were wobbling there, but what a recovery from Makabu, you know, to, to take a shot from, and that man's a beast. Go watch Dmitry Kudryashov's knockout reels right now. Do yourself a favor. That guy, that guy does too much damage, and Junior stood, like, took the guy's best shots and still came and, and went, and, um, 
the, the article, this article, sorry, I'm going back to again, alludes to the fact that uh, presumably whoever wins this fight will become the next WBC mandatory challenger. And um, it, it may be a while before it's vacant. As I mentioned earlier, there's been a big shakeup in the cruiserweight division with Alexander Usak. Uh, currently, the title um, uh, is vacant. Um, however, it says that the title won't be, will be, the WBC title is going to be on the line when Marius Bredis faces Junior Dortikus in the final later this year. However, whoever wins that has to fight Christoph Glovaki next as part of the rules. Uh, and I won't repeat what the article says here. It's a cluster boop, uh, of a semi-final with Bredis. So yeah, um, does this leave Makabu in the dark a little bit, you know, in terms of when is he going to get a shot? Because usually you defend your silver title once and you're the mandatory. This technically should make him the mandatory, but it's not set in stone. That's what it's saying here. And uh, the bad left hook, you know, uh, oh, bad left hook, sorry. He usually writes good articles, so I'll take, uh, I don't take their word for it, but you know what, I'm, I'll just read along the lines, uh, unless anything's, as soon as the WBC posts something, that's when you actually need to um, uh, listen, but the bad, look, uh, bad left hook uh, posts good articles too, so we'll take it for now, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, my prediction, and now we get to the part of the prediction, my prediction is that Junior Makabu to win by between 6 and 8. I think he's going to knock this guy between 6 and 8. This guy's never faced adversity before. And sometimes you don't know. But at the same time, I was watching this guy's training clips, uh, Papin, and he looks like he works too much. And looks like, uh, like when I mean he's too busy. And it looks like he's going to gas himself out. So I don't think he's he's used to the rounds. Maybe he'll get, maybe he'll adjust. You know what, I'm, I'm open to being proven wrong. Maybe he'll adjust. But I just feel like his work rate is, is too high for, for, for a cruiserweight. You can't, unless you're on something, you can't technically go for 12 rounds. Uh, working like that but um, all the best to both guys and my prediction again between six and eight uh, Junior Ilunga Makabu KO not even Tiko KO that's the prediction alright thanks for listening and don't forget to hit that subscribe button like and comment all the best guys I right, cheers